it just uh, away from the mic. Like, uh, obviously, we, we've heard that Anessa Silvera and Bubba Bolden will, will be back for the defense. Just uh, what do you envision for them and uh, the role that they can play and the boost that they can provide? I think, uh, for sure, from a depth standpoint, they're going to provide uh, a huge um, boost for us. But also just a spark. I mean, their energy, they both had two really good weeks of practices. Um, you know, I think their role is going to be determined kind of, kind of through the flow of the game. Um, so I can't give you a snap count on either one of them, but, but both of them have played really, really well the last two weeks in practice, and both of them have good energy about them. So I expect to see both of them on the field on Saturday. Just with those two, is there anything like skill set wise that maybe they bring to you guys that you don't or you have just you know, just physically in, yeah, just in terms of like what they do that, that maybe a different dimension they add? Yeah, I think Bubba adds a lot of range. Um, he has phenomenal ball skills. Uh, but he's a long guy that can run. He can cover a lot of ground. Um, you know, I think he, he's physical in the run game as well. And then I think Nesta, Nesta's a load inside now. He's a, he's a spark for us. I think he brings a ton of energy, um, you know, besides the physical aspect of it. But he's a physical gifted young man. And uh, both those guys are going to add a, a lot of value to this defense moving forward. Hey, Blake. Uh, obviously, you guys have been so good against the run. And you still producing a bunch of tackles for losses and sacks, but it's been the one area where you guys kind of been a little wishy-washy. It's just been third down, and particularly when guys are getting open. What, what do you see in particular on those plays that, that bother you? And is that the one area that has coordinated bothered you the most so far about the way you played? Yeah, I think we played well on third down uh, until last week, and a lot of that's on me. I don't think we necessarily had a great game plan going into it, and I uh, thought, um, you know, credit Central Michigan. I, I, I thought they did a better uh, job coaching than I did. And uh, so it starts with me, I think, uh, looking at it and really having a bye week and looking at the entire season. I think we identified multiple things that we can do better, um, and especially as a play caller. So, uh, you know, I expect to see some different things on Saturday in our, in our third down package, but it's definitely one of the more disappointing things from the Central Michigan game for sure. Blake, talk a little bit about Virginia Tech. I know they've been kind of up and down, but um, when you, I'm sure you obviously went back and watched their Boston College game, they had some success throwing the ball. And um, what kind of challenges their quarterback uh, presents and um, in relation to maybe some of the troubles in spots that you've had, you know, covering the passing game? I think, uh, you know, I, th I think first off, they have a good scheme. When you talk about just their overall scheme with motions, with different, um, you know, window dressing, as I like to call it, kind of eye candy. They can do a good job confusing you um, from that standpoint. I think their quarterback's an accurate guy, uh, doesn't make a lot of uh, mistakes. You know, he's a veteran guy. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing to me is, and I'll say it every week, but it's about us and, and us identifying what they're doing, doing a good job coaching it throughout the week and, and then going out and executing it on Saturday. But schematically, they provide a lot of issues for you on the defensive side of the ball. Coach told us uh, last week, I guess, the change of plans with Zach, you know, trying to retro and bring him back next season. I want to get your thoughts on that. And then also, when you try to do something like that, it's because you got some other guys that can play. Uh, I want to ask you about Brooks and, and uh, Joyner coming back from injury, I guess. Where could they fill in uh, in case something happens to Pinker or Shaq? You know, to answer the first part of your question, I think with Zach, he really came to us. You know, uh, last time I stood up here and y'all asked me, that really, it was the truth. And it, it was funny. It was literally like the next day he, he uh, gave me a call that night. And we kind of talked through it. And, and the thing I told him is I wanted it to, to be his idea. I don't want him to, to – and, and we gave him the pros and cons. And um, I think for him personally, it's really a uh, – a great opportunity if we're able to, to maintain his red shirt. You know, any time that we can benefit a young man in his future, and, and I think Zach McLeod can play on, on Sundays, um, you know, it was just a matter of, of Shaq and Pickney playing so well. And then, like you said, some of the younger guys are stepping up, so hopefully we'll be able to maintain his red shirt. But, um, you know, Sam Brooks is doing some, some really good things, especially as a, as a freshman. Uh, Pat Joyner is just coming back off his injury. Um, Darian Stevenson's done some nice things in practice uh, uh, as well. So we have to continue to develop those guys. Um, but, you know, from, from Zach McLeod's standpoint, I think it's going to be a huge benefit for, for him and for us, you know, moving forward uh, into next season from a big picture point of view. Blake, Greg Russo played his most snaps of the season against Central Michigan. Do you feel like moving forward he's earned maybe even more snaps or is that – 
Yeah, absolutely. I think he keeps producing. You know, he's going to continue to play. And, um, you know, I feel like a broken record because his name comes up every every week, but he's continuing to get more comfortable with what we're asking him to do. He continues to produce when he's out there, so he's going to continue to play. Um, you know, competition makes everybody better. I say that all the time, and I think he's really pushing Scott Patchen. I think he's, you know, pushing Neo, and I think Trayvon Hill is getting a lot better and getting more comfortable uh, in our scheme. And, you know, we wanted those things to obviously happen instantly, but unfortunately we're dealing with, you know, 18 to 22-year-old kids, and, you know, all we can do is ask for them to get better and better every week, and those two guys for sure have done that. So you'll see more of a, a dose of, of Greg Rousseau. You mentioned Trayvon, obviously he gets a, a chance against his old team this weekend. First of all, has he, have you tried to like do anything to keep his energy like where it needs to be? And just, does he help you guys at all with the game plan, like having that kind of insight into? I think from a personnel standpoint, um, you know, he's maybe told us about certain guys, um, you know, maybe what he thinks their, their strengths or their weaknesses are, right? You know, he, he was there for, for three years, so he knows those guys from a day in, day out basis. Um, you know, from an energy standpoint, uh, I keep telling them, you know, we don't kick off till 3.30. Stay level-headed, um, you know, and, and peak at the right time. We, we can't win the game today, you know. So uh, he's done a really good job with it. He has. He's been, he's been really level-headed. Um, he's had a great week of practice, like I said, and, and he's continued to get better in our scheme every single week. So I expect a big game from him on Saturday. Um, how great how much Yeah, I, I do. I think, uh, you know, Takori was counted on earlier, you know, getting going all the way back to the Florida game. And then obviously we got DJ back, which has kind of put him, um, you know, it's the next guy up, uh, you know, but he's he's continuing to to do a good job. Um, and Christian, Christian's probably shown more improvement than, than any of the freshmen when you talk about a competitive edge and watching him, you know, right now he's starting on, uh, on our punk block team and he goes out there and you know, plays press man on their gunner, and he's doing a great job, which as a defensive coach, that gives you more and more confidence to put him out there in the game. Um, still need to work on both, you know, both of them, understanding the, the fine points of our defense so from a leverage standpoint, from some of the adjustments that we make throughout the game, and that'll continue to come, but both of those guys are, are building confidence with the defensive staff on a week-in, week-out basis. Like I knew you weren't here last year, but they, they obviously look at some of the numbers comparing last year's numbers to this year's. They were playing more zone with this defense, and it was like 41% or something like that. And now you guys are playing 59% man. I guess what dictates that in terms of your game plan? Is it what the other team is doing, or is it specifically maybe what the strengths of some of these DBs are to so much turnover and different guys playing uh, this defense? It's probably a combination of both. Um, you know, I think with as much RPO game out there, you know, in college football, that's um, that's a common answer from from a defensive coordinator standpoint. Obviously, you have to guys have to have the guys that can do that, and I believe we do. Um, and then also, just maybe from a personnel standpoint, who we have, who we have, um, I think all our guys can can do a good job playing press man. So it's probably a combination of the two.